Have you ever wondered why so many of the top players in 2021 are able to use a controller and still perform so well? It seems pretty crazy that someone would be able to play on par with a keyboard and mouse player, even with aim assist. But that's how it works in Fortnite. What's up, Fortnite fam? I'm Cody, and today we're going to discuss everything that a controller player needs to know and do to become one of the best. So let's get into it, guys. While the controller has become much more popular over the course of Chapter 2, it's no secret that the majority of Fortnite pros out there still play on keyboard and mouse. That being said, there are a pretty wide number of pros that also play on controllers and have seen some pretty major success. One of those incredible controller pros is Wolfies, one of the very first controller players who didn't even jump on the controller bandwagon in Chapter 2, but had actually been playing on controller since the very beginning. It certainly didn't stop him from making his way all the way up to the top. All we need to do to find evidence of the absolute domination that Wolfies is able to put out is to look back at the Fortnite World Cup. During that turn, Tournament, keyboard players were still dominating the scene. Players like Mongrel, Benji, and Booga ripping through players every single game. But that didn't prevent Wolfies from proving that his preferred input method is no joke and should be taken seriously. In fact, Wolfies did so well in the World Cup that he was able to play second in the duo's format winning over a million dollars and shocking the entire Fortnite community by doing it all on the sticks of a controller. Ever since the World Cup, he has continued to assert his dominance, placing second place in the Chapter 2 Season 1 squad's FNCS and first in numerous cash cups. What does all this prove? Playing on a controller can be seriously profitable if you know what you're doing. And one of the best ways to know what you're doing, no matter what input method you use, is to head on over to ProGuides.com, where you can learn from some of the best coaches Fortnite has to offer to improve your game fast. Over the course of the past year, one of the most important factors in being able to win fights and perform well in competitive Fortnite is the concept of peace control. It's one of the most crucial things you can master in Fortnite. Learning how to peace control will cut down your enemy's options and lead you to winning more fights overall. If you aren't already practicing it, you're doing something wrong, even if it is hard on a controller. Peace control is all about taking control of a fight meaning that you are going to be pre-placing builds for opponents to run into. You're going to be taking walls without people noticing, and honestly, the list goes on. A good example of someone with top tier peace control on a controller is Reet. Having God peace control on the controller can be an absolutely game-changing upgrade for a player trying to develop their skills in the game, purely because it allows players to end fights much faster without having to burn through so many materials. One of the best ways to improve your peace control, whether you're a controller player or a keyboard and mouse player looking to get to the next level, is through peace control drills. We recently uploaded a video detailing 15 different peace control drills. So, if you want to learn more about peace control and how to accurately utilize it in a realistic situation in your game, then you should check out that video for the information. A major question that always pops up in the controller community is what aim assist type should I be using? Linear or exponential? Well, each type of aim assist has its own pros and its own cons. Linear provides players with raw stick input, allowing them to have better control of their mechanics. It also allows players to have better aim within closer ranges. For example, if a linear player was to box someone up and switch out to an AR, the majority of those bullets will end up landing right on their enemy. On the other hand, there's exponential. Exponential will cause smaller stick movements to have less of an effect, allowing for overall more precision. On the one hand, this means that exponential will feel more stiff and rigid than linear. On the other hand, it's going to allow you to land your shots in much further ranges allowing for pinpoint precise adjustments on enemies who are basically just tiny little dots on your screen. There are plenty of pros that play on both sides of the spectrum. On linear, we have players like Wolfies, Fishy, and Illist. Each of these three players are incredibly successful linear players who all use their incredible mechanics to outplay anyone they come up against. On exponential, however, we have players like Lecce, CRR, and Amplify. Each of these three players are also incredibly successful and clearly demonstrate that mechanics 
mechanics aren't the be-all and end-all when it comes to Fortnite. Instead, they're able to pick off their opponents at range, beaming them before they even know what's happening. To conclude, if you're a player that wants to have cracked mechanics and edits while taking your opponents out at an incredibly close range, then you should be playing on Linear, since it's easier to develop those mechanics with the raw stick input that Linear provides. However, if you want to have the best aim at range and quickly eliminate players before they have any idea what's going on, then the exponential input curve is the one for you. Practice and training are the most important things to remember when it comes to getting better at Fortnite. If you don't put the time in, you're never going to improve. And that's no different when it comes to getting better at Fortnite. Creative mode is one of the best places to practice your raw skills and aim. And these days, there are a ton of maps that you can pick and choose from when it comes to developing your game to the next level. An excellent choice for you to try and for you to evolve your peace control mechanics is the Raiders Peace Control Practice Map. This map contains a wide range of different setups for you to practice your peace control. There are 16 different drills for players to get grips with, each one practicing a different element of peace control. You also have the option to place bots within each setup, allowing you to practice your crosshair placement after peace controlling the bot. As we mentioned earlier in the video, peace control has become one of the biggest ways to increase your success in Fortnite. So hopping into this map and honing your skills and muscle memory would be a great place to start. Another creative map that you should definitely use to improve your Fortnite ability is the Shotgun Aim Facility 2.0. This creative map will allow you to practice your shotgun aim within four different courses. Solo box fights, a randomized aim and edit course, a specific aim and edit section, and finally a build edit arena. The main goal for the map is to get better at your crosshair placement after completing different edits. This should help you hit for the maximum amount of damage possible after an edit, so you'll actually be eliminating people instead of hitting someone in the toes for 30 damage. One of the biggest advantages that controller players have over keyboard and mouse players is the fact that we have what most people call double movement. On keyboard and mouse, players have four movement buttons, usually W, A, S, and D. This means that they can move in eight distinct directions by pushing two buttons at a time. Controllers, on the other hand, have full 360 movement due to the analog stick. This allows controller players to throw off people's aims when running around on the Fortnite island. Because of this full analog movement, you can also freely look around while moving in any direction, something that keyboard and mouse players pretty much can't recreate. So, how can we better implement this in our games? Well, if you are in a box with a player, instead of going straight for the aim duel, you could try literally running in circles around them. Using your controller movement, you'd be harder to track, so you can dodge into your enemy's blind shot while still being able to see and shoot them. In more long range engagements, however, being on a controller can be pretty handy when trying to counter people using a sniper. Running in a straight line or jumping while running is an easy way to get your head taken off. But with double movement, you can make it much harder for enemy players to actually connect their sniper shots. When you're running around the map, try to run left and right using your controller's 360 range of movement. It should throw your enemies off just enough that they'll land less of their shots than if they were playing against a keyboard and mouse player. Okay, Fortnite fam, let's recap. While keyboard and mouse is still the dominant control method in the pro scene, there are plenty of pros that have managed to prove that controller players can be just as good as any mouse and keyboard player out there. However, just like a keyboard player, you're going to need to learn how to be mechanically skilled using a controller too. Peace control is a crucial element of any Fortnite player skill set, and you're going to need to get the grips with it if you want to improve your controller game. Another way of upgrading your controller skills is by choosing between linear and exponential. Each input curve has its own benefits. Linear is for close-up engagements, and exponential is for far-range beaming. If you want to improve quickly, creative maps are where it is at. For real, brother. Raiders Peace Control Map is great for peace control improvements, while the Shotgun Aim Facility 2.0 allows you to accurately set up your crosshair placements after nailing your edits. Finally, controller movement. It is the biggest advantage we've got. 
so you need to learn how to maximize your potential with it. Playing with a controller has some serious benefits, and now you should know everything you need to know to become the best of the best. If you enjoyed the video, remember to leave a like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you never miss another video. Good luck, and I'll catch you in the next one. Steve's about to shoot. Oh, they're both shooting me. I'm coming to get y'all. Come on, get back here, y'all. Whoa, watch out! Thank <laughs> you.